I didn't know that that story that I had my, covered my vision completely. So when it blew out, I could see. And what I saw was that I never dreamed. I never dreamed beyond my means. I only dream for what's reality. everyone. Welcome to another episode of Women Worldwide. Thank you so much for showing up, for always sharing our episodes and for growing this network. I'll tell you, we have a list of guests that will keep us busy for the next six to eight months. And you know what? Because you're sharing your challenges, you're tweeting and even letting me know by email some of your challenges, we're lining up those guests to help you and to give advice. And we have another super guest again today. So let's get to today's topic. It is big life changes and stepping out of your comfort zone, especially when there's challenges. Change often means challenges. There's challenges in normal times. So we're in uncertain times. There's even more challenges. What would you say if I told you that you could change your life and your career? drastically and overcome any obstacle. And what would you say if I told you that you could create more miracles in your life? I bet you I've piqued your interest <laughs> right about now. So I want to introduce my special guest. Joining me on the show today is Hazel Ortega. Hazel is an entrepreneur, she is a speaker, she's an author, and she teaches courses online to help you create more miracles in your life. Her book, From Bounce Checks to Private Jets, <laughs> the title alone says it all. I could say so much about Hazel, but I think it's time that she shares her journey and advice with you. So Hazel, it is great to have you on Women Worldwide. Welcome. Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Oh, well, we're so happy to have you because, you know, it is intriguing when you say you can create more miracles in your life and even just the title of your book. And maybe you could share just a little bit about that big turning point, that pivot. And when you realize that you would go from bounce checks to private jets. Uh, well, uh, first, I do want to tell you a little bit about where my life was. Um, I grew up poor on welfare in one of the most dangerous areas of Los Angeles, one of seven siblings. And uh, growing up, I never had my own bed. And um, I didn't even finish high school. I went straight to work. And uh, no inspiration to go to college no desire of that um, that was for other people and I ended up getting a really good job as a legal secretary at a workers compensation law firm and I was working there and um, I talk a lot about creating a vision for your life we all have a vision some of our visions are really small so when I was working as a secretary, I thought that that's as good as it gets for me. Right. I was making $15 an hour. And my vision was to keep that job for the rest of my life. And uh, nobody in my family had ever earned more than $15 an hour. And so I really thought that I was doing very well for myself. Right. Even though at the same time I was bouncing checks. So I was um, not even living paycheck to paycheck. I was living uh, below paycheck to paycheck because it would take me uh, checks to float to get to the next paycheck. So we write all, you know, all of these uh, checks with no money in the bank. And, um, and I just thought that that's how life occurred like that's just the way it was right and, you saw uh, it sort of play out with your family and it was playing out with you I saw my mom 
borrow five dollars from the neighbor all the time just to um, hold her over till the welfare check arrived. Right. And then a barter, I'll give you sugar, you give me eggs kind of thing, you know, and uh, we never were in abundance. We're always just getting by. But we were always getting by. There was never a moment that there was not anything to eat uh, and that we didn't have a place to live. I mean, we, we were getting by. And so I was repeating that legacy of poverty in, even though I had a job, I was um, you know, never really above water. If I wanted to treat myself to something, it meant that my account was going to go negative. And it would be negative for weeks at a time. And um, it's really hard. It was very hard. And I didn't realize this, but I was passing those uh, habits on to my own kids. Um, as I was working as a legal secretary, I had three kids at home that were watching everything that I was doing. Um, and in any way, it, I thought it was great, though. My life was good. I wasn't complaining. That's just the way it was. And um, I ended up getting hurt on the job. And I was sitting at a desk for somebody shorter than me. I'm pretty tall. I don't know if you remember. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> So I was sitting at a desk that, um, that was set up for somebody shorter. And after a few years of sitting there, I developed carpal tunnel and yes. carpal tunnel and problems with my neck. And the doctor told me I couldn't do my job anymore. And so my whole vision of being at that job for the rest of my life just changed. Right. That changes everything. Because that brought purpose. Exactly. Um, to doom and fear. Mm. Yeah, I had a security of a job. My job was a union job. I would get um, increases, sure. yearly increases of like 25 cents. But you counted uh, on that, clearly. Every, to a, every dollar, mm -hmm. you know, made a difference. And so... <clears throat> I was scared and I, didn't, I was 26 years old and I didn't even have a high school diploma. My boss at the time uh, encouraged me to go back to school and I really didn't see anything else that I could do that would support my kids and my lifestyle in the sense of like pay, my, pay your mortgage and uh, continue having gas in your car to take the kids to school, like food in the refrigerator. Uh, so I, I kept going to school and I got my high school diploma at 30 years old. And uh, then I kept going just a little bit more, my associate's degree, a little bit more, my bachelor's degree. And then I started to really see that there was maybe some uh, bigger vision for me like to be a professional. I didn't know that I could be a professional. As a matter of fact, I, I told my boss I could see myself working for you for the rest of my life. And he looked at me and, and he was like, no way. Right? You're you not going to work here for the rest of your life. It's interesting that you said that because you have to see it. You have to envision who you are and, and what you're going to do. And it sounds like education was a very big first pivot. Yeah. Education. It, to me, unlocked my best life. It was uh, just those small uh, things that lead to the big dreams coming true. I think uh, education was one of those keys that opened up this life that I experience now. Um, and I totally envisioned this life, but I didn't know before. Right. So when I got my when I went back to school, I thought, well, okay, there's a possibility I could get my high school diploma. And then when I did, it made me believe in myself a little bit more. My self-esteem started growing, and I started to see myself as a student. And then my AA, that built me up, and then why not my BA? And then once I got the BA, I was like, well, maybe I could get a doctorate degree. <laughs> and I um, did. I became an educational psychologist. Congratulations. And, Thank you. And that was not even supposed to happen. I really had a hard time in school. Um, I grew up in a poor neighborhood, so 
um, the teachers weren't the best teachers and they weren't the happiest teachers. They were dealing with a lot of kids with issues in the classrooms. So it, I wasn't getting really great education. Um, Sounds like your boss was a, a first mentor. Luckily, I had um, my first person that helped me to get my high school diploma was my, my high school counselor. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He was a truancy counselor. <laughs> So our, da- our neighborhood was so dangerous, and my wow. best friend was killed when he was 12 years old. I'm sorry. He was stabbed while we were okay. waiting at the bus stop. And so my mom was fearful of everything, and rightly so. So she never let us go out anywhere with our friends. We, we couldn't have any fun outside of the house, especially not after dark. We couldn't be outside in our own patios. Um, so what I did is I ended up ditching school. Because the kids are going to have fun whether you let them have fun or not. And so I ditched school. So that's why I didn't have a high school diploma until I was 30. So my first mentor was the high school truancy counselor. And then for sure, my boss, the attorney that I worked for. And he was a Latino. I had never seen a professional Latino ever, not even on television. So I didn't even know that I could. What a role model. Sometimes having role models around us is really important, I think. That helps oh, you, especially somebody who encourages you and says, you can do it. And, you know, what do you mean? <laughs> You're not going to be here for the rest of your life. Hazel, I'm going to ask you just to hold your thoughts for a moment. We're going to get back into this discussion. I want to pivot over just very quickly to today's sponsor which is Routledge, uh, Routledge Publishing. And they are one of the largest publishers in the world of textbooks and academic journals. And they happen to be the publisher of my book, Answers for Modern Communicators. And Hazel, I don't know if um, I've shared this with you, but my book is a Q&A book. And I've answered over 150 questions on how to socialize your brand on social media, reputation, relationship building, how do you measure your communication? And I thought it would be fun if you answered one of the questions from the book. Are you game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I just picked question number 80. Now you've pretty much told your, your story and you've made some big pivots and now author, speaker, and all the things that you're doing. So I'm just wondering, how do you tap or how did you tap the full potential of social media for yourself along your journey? Uh, Social media is fantastic for for branding. Um, I am right now working on my personal brand for speaking and sharing my story and my products. Um, On Facebook, I have a Facebook page. I have a a lot of friends on Facebook, so I get a lot of likes. And uh, I'm growing my Instagram. I'm definitely not um, taking advantage of the full potential, but I'm um, paying attention. (laughs) Yeah. And so one thing that I have noticed is my own friends and and people in my circle uh, give me opportunities because I'm posting about that I'm speaking at a teen empowerment. Then they write to me and say, can you uh, speak at my event? That's uh, great. Yeah. And I'll share events and then people see it and show up and then they check me out and then they invite me to their associations to be a speaker. So I'm constantly posting and uh, sharing just to be in front of people's, uh, you know, a screen and top of mind. It's really that's important great. to stay top of mind. And, and that's helping how do- too. <laughs> you're helping by going and speaking totally helping people and making a difference. Excellent. Thank you so much for answering the question and a big thank you to Routledge for being the sponsor of this Women Worldwide episode. So Hazel, let, let's pick it up um, where we were. We just were talking a little bit about the role models and you know, you made a sharp turn at some point. So after getting all of these degrees, was that a time of understanding that, wow, I can be anything, let me go out and help? Did you still have challenges that you were facing? Maybe talk a little bit about that. 
uh, yeah, so getting a degree taught me how to do a job, right? So now I knew how to um, be a psychologist, right? I knew human behavior, uh, behavior modification. I was working as a school psychologist. Um, but that, that didn't really change my life much. What changed my life, I mean, I was still a psychologist at 36 years old and fifth fighting with my sisters. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't have any sisters. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're beautiful, beautiful to have sisters. Uh, I, okay. we just didn't know, I didn't know how to solve my problems without violence. Got it. So part of my story growing up is my mom shot and killed her boyfriend. Oh, my and, goodness. Yeah, and became oh, a fugitive boy. for five years before going to prison. Oh. I've only known ways of solving your problems by manipulating, strategizing, fighting for everything, and physically sure. fighting. I didn't hey. have any other example. And none, no other example. And so here I am at 36 years old, fist fighting with my sister, and life was just not working. No. So um, I was invited to do a personal development seminar. And I went there and I realized that I had a sob story. And because my mom went to prison and because she was this um, strong figure in my life that taught me a lot of things, but then there are other things that were missing. A lot of things were missing from, from my childhood. And um, what I realized is I used her as an excuse for why I didn't have the things I wanted in my life. And I, when I was there, I thought like, well, my story is a, a good story. Like, yeah, I could, I could use this story to, to sh uh, shy away from having a big life because nobody expects anything from me anyway. You know, the fact that I'm not in jail myself is a, is, you know, a miracle and people are, you know, always praising me of how well my life has turned out. But at the same time, I was fist fighting with my sister. So what I realized was that I had this sob story and that I wasn't expecting anything of myself and, I, and nobody else expected anything of me. And so why would I do any better? And uh, I did realize that that was like BS. Mm -hmm. And when I didn't know that that story that I had my, covered my vision completely. So when it blew out, I could see. And what I saw was that I never dream. I never dream beyond my means. I only dream for what's reality. Like um, if I wanted to take my kids uh, uh, out to Disneyland, that's a dream because I didn't have the money for that, right? So it's a dream. But why didn't I dream bigger than that? Like, I never dreamt that I would take them to Disney World, like get on a plane and fly to Florida. I'm in California. Right. Uh, Disneyland is down the street. So that was a dream for me, and it was so small. And so I was like, I dream, why am I not dreaming of getting on a cruise ship with the kids and Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse? Are, you know, I didn't dream that way. Right, and doing and, big things because... I mean, they always say that you can go as far as your imagination can take you. And this is clearly an example. Yes, Deirdre, in that moment, I realized mm -hmm. for the first time that the glass ceiling is something that is self-imposed. In my case, I, I was in awe and I, like, I did this to myself. I... I did this myself. And so what I started to do and almost immediately was dream big. Like what, what can I stay home with my daughter and be, and be the one that takes her to school and picks her up and never have a babysitter. And I started my first business in my garage of my home, which today is the, the largest counseling center for injured workers in California. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. I started dreaming, um, millions of dollars in my account. I started dreaming of private jets, a uh, mansion, <laughs> my home to be a mansion, having the love of my life. And all these Being things happened. But Everything I, I, happened. I want to ask you a question because you said something, something key before. Before you can dream big, do you have to realize what's missing? Because it's almost like you said there were things missing in your life. And then that's why you didn't expect anything. 
Is that a piece of it to realize, to understand where you came from, to be able to say, oh my gosh, I get it, sky's the limit? Uh, I think uh, a lot of people stay stuck and that there's, they just think that this is it. And life, life sucks. Like, you know, um, this is and just And if you say way. life sucks, it will. Yeah, they just think, well, you know, it doesn't get any better than this. This is the way it is. Especially if you're surrounded by other people that are complaining and yes. living this paycheck to paycheck life. You don't know. But if you are in a moment of introspection where your life doesn't work you, and you want different, that's when your mind starts to open up to look and see what is available. What is missing that if I put that in would make the difference. And so I was fist fighting with my sisters. And what I did was create a vision of us loving each other. Like if we were in heaven. Oh, wow. That's very intentional. Sounds like you're very intentional and you truly believe in this uh, visualization imagination. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. I made everything come true. And I visualize every year ahead of time. And everything I say I want, I get. And they're like incredible things. So what happens if, you, okay, what happens if, um, you know, old habits die hard? There's, there's women worldwide listeners who are probably saying, but I've got some really negative stuff happening. What happens if you have some negative thoughts? Do you just pivot away from that? Do you realize it and then dream big? Is it the, the power and the intention that gets you past what is real or appears to be real in your life? Yeah. So um, you can change your negative uh, defaults by, you know, just breaking, creating a muscle for it. Okay. Right. So you, you have a negative thought, change it. So if you say, well, I'm fat, you know, I'm uh, voluptuous. Like there's always an opposite word it's to that. A better, and that's a better feeling to tell you the truth. Yeah. Right? You're not lying to yourself. Exactly. Exactly. That's a yeah. really good point. Um, you know, Hazel, I can't even believe this conversation has been so fascinating. I'm going to ask you the advice question. Uh, which Women Worldwide listeners love to hear, if you could just give them some advice or action steps on how they can make that pivot, that change to drastically change their careers and their lives, even when things around you aren't the best or look uncertain. What, what would you say to them? Uh, I would say that Create a vision and from the best case scenario. And if you believe in God, if God is available there for you, then anything is possible. Uh, the universe, um, create what's the best case scenario for your health? What's the best case scenario for your relationship, your marriage that you're in? What does it look like with all the details? Let your, your brain see that. Like it already happened. Like it's five years from now. What is it going to look like? Our brain stops us a lot because it's scared. It's never seen it that way. So saying something like your marriage is going to work and you're really hot for your husband when you haven't really been, you know, your brain's going to be like, yeah, right. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so it, pretend like it already happened and you're telling a friend. Um, that's the best thing. Uh, what do you want your mom and dad and sisters and brothers relationship to look like? How much money do you want to have in the bank? What, you know, how do you want to feel when you show up to work, regardless whatever work you're doing? How do you want to feel? Like, see all of that in your brain and then draw it. I drew mine. And when you come into my house, I have it framed in my dining room. So, and everything came true. Oh, my goodness. When you say draw it, because I know we can visualize it. You can close your, your eyes and, and see things that you want to see. Do you write it down? Are you journaling it? Are you... Is that a part of this process? Whatever you want. Um, I drew my very first masterpiece that's framed. I drew it. And if you see it, it looks like a four-year-old drew it. But my brain saw it, all the details, all the beauty of it. Oh my I, you know, imagine what heaven looks like and being there with my sisters and playing as adults, but we're playing like we're nine-year-olds. 
Um, so, so my brain saw it. Yeah. Yes, a painted picture. And then now I do, I do write it out. I okay. do like that practice. And then I share it. I'll read it to my boyfriend or to my daughter or to my girlfriends. I have various groups of uh, women that I belong to. Mm -hmm. That's another tip is like uh, start a group, get community with people that are on a high vibration. So if your thing is to lose weight, then start a group or join a group for people that are losing weight. Be with people that are up to something. Excellent. Excellent. I mean, this has just been fantastic advice. I only have one last question. This interview flew. <laughs> Where can people find out more about you and your book and, and your courses? Well, thank you. Um, I'd love to hear from people. This is my book. I don't know if it's backwards. I see it backwards. Nope, we can see it. <laughs> okay, so this book is amazing. Um, I wrote it and now I'm, I'm so amazed at how many people are writing to me from all over the world telling me they wrote, they read it in, without stopping, like all the way through. I believe but, it. Yeah. An hour and a half, two hours it takes to read it all the way through. You won't put it down. I've already had a film offer for the book. Um, so really great things are happening. Mm -hmm. Um, on my website is hazelortega.com and themasteryofmiracles.com. That's where I have an online program where you can do the work and see some videos. And then I'm also putting together some live workshops. Great. The book live here at my, ho at my home in California. And that I invite is, you too, Deirdre. Oh my gosh, you know I'm coming. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Uh, what's your Instagram handle for everybody? Hazel Ortega, official. Awesome. Hazel, thank you so much for sharing your journey, your challenge, big pivots, all the things that you've went through, and for giving really, really good advice. <laughs> we appreciate you, so thank you. Oh, thank you, Deirdre. I love being here. Oh, loved having you. And thank you to all of you for tuning into Women Worldwide. Keep giving us your feedback. We love hearing from you. Make sure you tweet me. I'm at Dee Breckenridge. And sign up for the Women Worldwide updates on womenworldwideshow.com. We have some courses that will be launched. <laughs> I'll be launching courses. And you'll be able to find out information if you sign up on the website. And until our next episode, friends, stay focused, energized, and feeling empowered.